Lemon Amiga present. A Playtime video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. there once again welcome to another lemon amiga play guide and review this time we'll be checking out enemy tempest of violence developed by andre vudreith and published by anachronia in 1997 the game begins with a space intro which is absolutely nothing to do with the star trek theme tune or star wars we can see various ships on screen slowly making their way across it as we get the long animated introduction sequence this game came on two discs and so we do get an introduction with the guys on the screen, the idea and the programming, Andre Vudry. You can see the main perpetrator, the aliens, are also on the screen. Graphics support you can see, and also some of the weapons that we can carry. So the X-34 pistol is, well, quite good. We also have the Crusher pump action shotgun. This game review is an old request, but I can't remember who requested it, perhaps even Andre himself, because I did interview him on the Lemon Amiga website a couple of years ago now, so if you check out Lemon Amiga, click on the games, and then you'll find, if you scroll down, the interview with Andre, where I got to ask him some questions about certain games, including this one. of course nothing to do with Star Wars we get a scroll introduction and in January 2029 three strange objects are detected near Mars to explore these objects the space organization Nessie launches a transport ship with a crew of 273 exact people so the trip there took absolutely ages and seven months to be exact the objects turn out to be huge intergalactic gigantic spacecrafts of alien origin yet they seem abandoned well that's pretty good we have found Marie Celeste ships a bit like paradroid we're gonna have to go in there and we're gonna have to shoot the ships down and the inhabitants Scientists are set off on the objects accompanied by three armed security squadrons. The interior of the ships consists of angled walkways and hallways, an enormous labyrinth.
On the title screen we can see Enemy Tempest of Islands version 1.4. This was released in 97, the author also released another version called Easy Play, which we'll get to a bit later on. You can see it still says 1.4, but this is the Easy Play version, which fixes some bugs. On that title, we can also enter the configuration, we can switch on and off the music and the sound effects, which play together, and we can switch off the coloured walls, and it's also got a PAL and NTSC conversion, so you can play this in PAL 50Hz, or in CSC 60Hz, we can even install the game, both discs of it, onto a hard drive. You can also check out the author's address. I've no idea whether he's still there, but I managed to contact him, so I think he's still there, you can still contact the author. So, pressing that fire button, we can get into the game itself. We are in a difficult position, our scientists are scattered on all three of these ships and are almost defenceless against the attacks. They will not make it much longer without help. And that's where we come in. This is us, we are a Space Marine Attack Soldier. We are armed with one gun and no bullets. And we also have a number of things on the screen. Let's jump up and collect whatever this is in the top corner. It looks like a collectible, and so we can pull back, hopefully, bend down and collect that. That's an automatic map maker. That means, unlike a Dizzy game, we'll actually get this level mapped onto the screen, which you can see in the bottom of it. And it would have been helpful in Pitfall 2 and stuff like that to have an automatic map maker to make stuff like that very much easier and very much more enjoyable. So as we move on to different screens, that will fill in for us. And you can see a basic heads up display on the bottom of the screen. You can see our person is in green, the dark green area is our body shield, when that runs out it will go to a light green, which is our body, and then once that goes into red, then we've taken too much damage, and once that depletes we'll simply return to the last checkpoint, as long as we have some time left. You can see we're carrying the Avenger at the moment, there is a simple map there, there is nobody on the level apparently, to tag or collect, and we have 440 seconds remaining in which to complete this task. Right at the start, the player will be unfamiliar with these controls, and it is weird controls. I think maybe you have to push up to activate the gun, and down to jump, which is absolutely the opposite of what most people tend to do. And so I think pulling down diagonal makes sure that we can jump and keep running at the same time. And also if we push up and diagonal, maybe that makes us jump. I can't actually remember the controls, but they seem to be reversed in this game. Pulling left and right makes us run, and pressing the fire button when we have the gun drawn makes us fire our projectiles on the target. This looks like an ammo box. Yes, it is. That means we get a selection of ammo now to fire off, and you can see some blood splattering on the walls and pushing up there next to that box means it's a checkpoint and checkpoints are a bit ambiguous in the game they're flashing boxes and if you notice them you're supposed to trigger them that means if we die we'll simply return back to that point After that you'll get a replay of whatever it is that got you killed in the first place, like sensible soccer with an R in the corner, and that moves at a very slow rate, just so that you can see exactly what happened, and we can survive at least one screen depth of fall damage, but if we jump down more than one screen, then it'll start to scream, and it's very easy sometimes to miscalculate these jumps and sometimes it's easy to fall down one of these gaps to our death. So it's trial and error, which one do we fall down? Let's try maybe 
the second one and the third one. I'm actually running straight past these at the moment. Oh, that doesn't look very good, so it's trial and error on every one of these levels. And the checkpoint is right there, so let's throw ourselves off and get killed. So there is only one option left to us, and oh, that's the middle route. And if we fall down the middle, hopefully it will get to somewhere that is safe. As we wander around all of these caverns, we won't find too much to help us, but these E's and an arrow point us towards the exit. On this very first level, all we have to do is to make our way to the exit and survive. We don't have to rescue anybody, we don't have to shoot much. What we need to do is to find the exit and the E's, you can see, point us in the right direction. So, thank God for small mercies, we do get some help, and as long as we're moving in the right direction, hopefully we'll make it before that time runs out. And every single one of these levels definitely helps if you have some kind of heads up, and then you know where to go. Walking over these switches will open the doors, but they are on a timer, and so if you get trapped between the door, obviously you'll get squashed. It's important to rush as quickly as possible through all those timing puzzles and there will be a few puzzles on these levels which do require us to figure out that timing and so it's not a time critical game but if we do make a mistake we'll go all the way back to the checkpoint and we'll actually lose the time that we spent wandering around so if we spend two minutes wandering around get killed and go all the way back unfortunately that means we've lost that time and because this time limit on this version of the game is incredibly tight it means unless you know the level you'll probably not get enough time to complete it You can see a horde of dead bodies on the bottom of the screen, that's where the aliens have been attacking our scientists. Boom, boom, boom is the sound of our checkpoints, that's very handy. And dead ends in this game aren't appreciated too much, but it's a fairly linear first level, you can see there isn't too much of the map now that we need to uncover, and the exit should be, hopefully, in the bottom right corner. That automatic walkway I think can be switched off as well and I've no idea which way I'm supposed to be going but it seems that we're going in the right direction because we're still alive and that's the most important thing. The white E you can see on the bottom points towards the actual exit so if you fall down there that's level complete. And each one of these levels will introduce us to something else, a new type of thing to do, or a puzzle, or something like that. And so you can see the controls in this game making life hard work, and you have to be in the right position to jump up. And so you have to jump over this gap and make sure that you don't pull the gun out by mistake. And you can see we only have basically 90 seconds left to go. Our team arrived too late and could do nothing, however other sections are awaiting, our team arrived and so you can see if you hold down the fire button you can speed up through that message and it will give us a breakdown of everything we've managed to do on that level and also a replay from our very last checkpoint which is absolutely useless but it's in the game. So let's move on to the second level, the code password is FEAR.
The shuttle now docks on Cromwell 2 and Team B set off. With their medication, our sensors have registered movement near the sector that cannot originate from humans. To administer medication, you must stand next to a load of people and I think pull down and that drops the medication on the floor. Mission 2, no risk and there is no risk of anything on this level but you have to tag all the good guys. Let's pick up the map maker and solve the very first puzzle on this level. Yes, more automatic doors. On the second level we'll find survivors and so we'll need to find them, pull back to drop off some medication for them and you can see at the bottom there are 52 survivors to tag on this level. Luckily if there are gangs and crowds of them and more than one so sometimes we'll find five or six and at the moment we've just found three. So let's dive into them, drop off the medication and you can see the numbers on the bottom that have dropped by the three that we've rescued. That's 49 now that we need to find. Because of the time limits and the puzzles and everything else, you'll have to be familiar with the level to romp straight through it high speed in time to finish it. You can see it looks like 32 colours have been used on the screen, but the backgrounds are actually transparent. What they've actually done is they've used the copper effect on the Agnes chip and that produces a nice copper background of loads and loads of colours. That means that we get more than 32 colours on this game. And that's fantastic. You can also see symbols in the background and lots of decoration. And for 1997, this was a very well done, very greatly produced game on the graphic front. You can see it's all up to date and modern. And I really do love the graphics in this game. It's certainly a step up from many platformers that we've got on the Amiga. It's not a simple black background. They've actually gone to some trouble to use the core processor to create a nice copper gradient effect. They've also gone to town with the atmosphere and the atmosphere starts off pretty quiet on the first level and then builds up with some atmospheric music as you're going through the game and there are maybe 15 different soundtracks in the game and there are maybe I don't know maybe 30 levels something like that on the game so there are plenty of levels to get along with. seem to be moving in a circle at the moment trying to tag these guys and above here is where we need to go but it doesn't look like I'm going that way I'm going this way instead and if you leave one guy out of the picture then obviously you haven't rescued all of the guys on the level so if I'm going the wrong way and I haven't tagged them all and I haven't taken my time obviously it will have to do that all over again. up some pistol ammo and some rounds and the rounds will appear as a cartridge that we can put into that gun so we can have lots of ammo and ammo isn't really a problem on this level because there's nothing really to shoot or kill but there will be on later levels and this game turns into an aliens inspired shoot him up and a massacre so if you like the aliens franchise and starting off on ships floating around in space 
finding survivors and getting deeper and deeper into an atmospheric platformer, this is one of the most atmospheric platformers on the Amiga. This game was all coded and designed, most of the graphics that you can see were created by Andre Vudrys and he started out on the Amiga working on Traders for the French Linnell company. Traders is a mule game that we managed to get on the Amiga in 1991. You can see we can shoot things, and in this case we've now shot this moving platform, which means we can access higher levels. Andre moved on to Locomotion in 1992 for the German Kingsoft label. You might remember Locomotion that we've reviewed already. It is a fantastic game, it used to be one of my favourites back in the day. And you can see that we also need to aim on target sometimes to get rid of those obstacles. And aiming in this game, pushing up and then pushing left and right to aim, is pretty difficult. And it's something else that you'll have to get used to. So find sections that are inside and outside of things and in that one you can see that there is an entrance to another area that we haven't discovered yet and I'm not quite sure I think that's the way to the exit and I don't know but maybe we should check that out because if we've rescued enough people maybe the time is to go for the exit. Andre moved on to Enemy Tempest of Violence in 1997, so we had a bit of a break from the Amiga. Then Mad Lokes came out, which is a much more polished version of Locomotion in 1998. And Enemy Tempest of Violence 2 that we reviewed came out in 2013. Also some subtle lighting effects that we'll definitely see a bit later on in these levels and as we go down suddenly the light will change and look at that lethal acid drops if we collide with that lethal acid we'll die and so harmless acid it's not a massive drop like a cartoon adventure it's a tiny pixel so this game trying to be a bit more realistic and look at that not only do we find the color palette changes time to time to give us that illusion of changing scenery also the colors change the backgrounds change as well and sometimes even the music so this is another section is it a dead end or is that a hidden section well i guess there's only one way to find out and there are too many dead ends in this game which waste our time and that's definitely one thing you'll have to watch out for dead ends in this game because the time limit is the critical thing and it looks like, to my mind, this is just eye candy with absolutely nothing here for us to do. So it's a case of running all the way back now and admiring this wonderful scenery and this atmospheric music. Additional graphics and the music was created by Michael Shugel and he started out with Ooze Creepy Night apparently which was released on the Amiga in 1989 Ooze Creepy Night is a text adventure with some great graphics it got 8.2 on the Lemon Amiga database which is fantastic and Michael moved on to Traders 
again with Andre1991, Madlux, also he helped with Necrocom in 1991 for Linnell, and also the very crappy Never Ending Story 2. On the Amiga, we're rushing around trying to get those puzzles sorted out so that we can tag and bag all these survivors. And there are 18 survivors now left on this level with 200 seconds remaining. And I'm playing this with the all 30. I've no idea whether this runs in real time or not, but you can see it plays absolutely flawlessly. And the graphics will change level to level. It's just that they seem very familiar on these very first ones. So let's see if we can find our way through this game. And yet more dead ends we will find and more things to waste our time in the game. So sometimes it's trial and error, falling down things and you can see a few more people there. So a few more falling hazards. That means we'll have to trial and error this level. So that's the end one, so it's that we know it's not that way. So maybe it's the middle way again. And maybe it's this way. No, it isn't. So there's only one possible way now where we can go and I think if you walk to the edge of these platforms he will shake his head to say which ones that you can't fall off. In this case we have managed to find a platform which leads finally to the exit. The time's running out, the lights are flashing like flashback. So let's speed this footage up. We're now mere screens away from the exit, having gone through way too many dead ends. So going through here, you can see the white exit door. We've only got a few seconds left. Are we actually gonna make it? Well, I can tell you now, no. This is only the second level in the game, and unless you know it inside out, it's only just possible to make it, so that was definitely one of the criticisms that people leveled against this game, and that's why the easy version came along a bit later. So that means we have to play this level all over again, let's fast forward that through to the end of it, and you can see now with plenty of time, 300 seconds, surely there is enough time now that we know where we're going to complete this. You would think so, but as you watch this footage, we're only still going to make it. I've no idea why, even though we're rushing through this level at top speed. And look at that, sometimes one of the guys that are hanging around there with a gun, if you hang around there as well and drop into the scenery, they will shoot us, and I think it's a one shot kill on this particular level, that means we've died. So some of the enemies, if you creep up on them and scare them to death, they will shoot you. So what you're supposed to do is to get your gun handy, just like this. Now the warm shooters, we can drop down and we can't actually kill any of these hostages, but they can kill us. So that means that we've got only six now left to find, but look at that time limit. So it's going to be touch and go yet again, whether we can actually complete this. So one of the major criticisms, particularly on that Lemon Amiga website, was the difficulty in the puzzles, which sometimes seems unfair, and definitely the time limits seem unfair. 
And on the later levels, you really don't have enough ammo. So the team has successfully completed the mission. They've now distributed all those medical supplies, which means we've done that level. So finally we can watch if we really want to do that slow action replay. But what I'm actually going to do is move on to level three, fight. So this gives you an idea there will be some shooting going on in this level. Team C has set off on Chrono 3 and begins to search for the missing and in this section there will also be two people important to the security squadron, a female doctor, the female co-pilot. The former will help with administering wounded and fortify the squadron and they must be found and brought out so nothing makes one so bitter as the feeling of not being welcome. Now we have maybe 750 seconds to run around the third level, which is perhaps, I don't know, maybe 12 minutes. So you can tell that these levels don't take very long. It's just that you'll have to know what you're doing and not get stopped. complaints about this very first game of the two in the series was the fact that it's quite difficult and many players only reached level four then they got stuck and that's quite disappointing considering there are many many levels to get through so if you get stuck on level four then that's obviously disappointing I actually got stuck on this third level I never actually got off this third level and you're gonna see me wandering around completely blindly at this point, trying to get through it. In 2011, Andre came back to the scene and after a fan supported version 2, or concurrently, he actually announced in 2011 that there would be a sequel, Enemy 2, that came out in 2013, but he also released an easy player version of this game, which has a lot more time on some of the levels, the difficulty of the puzzles have been changed, there are more life force on our friendly so we don't get shot to death so easily, there is more ammo scattered around the levels, there is more time, there is more save points as well scattered around the levels, and it's generally easier. So if you want to play this game, don't play the original game, which I'm playing at the moment, which according to Andre is full of bugs. They released this with some bugs in it, which made some of the levels incompletable. So if you're going to play this game, you better find his website, which is hopefully on the screen, and you can find that in German and English. And then what we have to do is find the download section, we'll find two ADFs. Once you've downloaded those and got those working, hopefully you can install those onto your hard drive using the built-in installer. And that gives you version 1.04a, which is the easy play version that fixes the bugs and has all those enhancements that I mentioned as well. You 
fantasy by having to go around it all again. And sometimes we'll have to remember what we're supposed to do. And I think you can press the escape key to return back and try this level however many times you want to try it until you eventually get it right. Also on Andre's website you'll find the archive of the MP3s of the soundtrack to this game and if you download that, that will play on any MP3 player all of the soundtracks of all of the music and some of those are quite well done. You can see I'm dying like crazy on the Amiga version and this being 1997 not that many magazines were around to review it. Let's see if I can actually remember to jump. You can see shaking his head there. That means you can't fall off there and survive. And it's those little touches that you only find out after you've been playing this game a bit to move on to the edge of platforms to see if it is even possible. And that's also one of the hints that you can pick up as well. So there are little details in the game. And I love the details in the graphics. I love the details in the music. But firing off and hitting that trigger should mean that we can now escape this level. Unfortunately, I have no idea how we're supposed to do that. And maybe even, well, that activates this light step so that we can get out of this area. But I have no idea if this is where we're supposed to go because it simply loops us back to the same spot where we've been before already. So that's not very well done, and that means that we're going to go around the levels again and again and again, getting completely lost. This is the very final game that I'm narrating for season 6, so... This won't be the very final game released in the order, it'll probably end up being in the middle of a whole bunch of other games, but this is the last one I need to narrate, so this is the last one I need to edit, and that means after this, all of my narration of all of this series, and all of the editing of all of the guides to the series, will now be done. So, I hope you can see from this guide how you're supposed to do it, how you're supposed to romp around, tag things, collect things, and shoot things. And after this, we'll be moving on to some later levels, which show you a bit more of the aspects of this game. I think we're supposed to move left there, but we can't go left because of this moving platform. So before I completely rip my hair out, let's move on to 28. Chaos. We thought we were safe, but then all hell broke loose. On this level, we get an automatic map, which reveals the entire map for us without us having to do anything. You can see on the bottom there are 84 friendlies to bag, there are also 10 friendly aliens and 10 enemies I think, and the friendly aliens and the enemy aliens are virtually identical, I think the eyes are slightly bigger on the enemies, but apart from that we can pick up health, and you can see some friendlies are now dropping towards us, we've now got an Uzi or an MP3 with tons and tons of ammo. Later levels remind us even more of aliens, and on this level we're supposed to lead everybody out to the exit door, like Muhammad was supposed to lead them all out, and you can see all heck is breaking loose as we try to get through these levels, and as we move through these, the friendly aliens will shoot the enemy aliens, and we're supposed to rescue all of these guys. We can also shoot doors open, and if we run out ahead, hopefully we can shoot all the enemies before the friendlies get killed. That's 
pretty difficult because if we dawdle around, obviously they'll get killed on the next screen, and every screen is a massacre. We can even shoot out the lights on some of these screens, and the lighting effects also definitely change with the firing of our guns. This screen is completely dark, and I love the colour palette changes to simulate light and darkness in this game. I love the atmosphere, I love the music, and I love the feeling of walking around an alien spaceship. So this does turn into an alien breed type of game. We're going around shooting lots of things. And so we didn't save the pirate bum bum, unfortunately, in this case. Let's enter another password from the Lemon Eager website. It's level 25 alarm. This one is called Pursuit. On this particular level, we get a map of it right from the start, but we also get a tracker as well. So just like aliens, there are four aliens to destroy on this level, and their position will appear on the tracker. So we'll have to find the motion tracker, we'll have to find where they are on the level, we'll have to shoot them with our shotgun, and then once we've shot all of those four aliens, we'll still have to find a way to that exit. This game came out very late, but it did manage to get reviewed in Amiga format, who awarded Enemy Tempest of Violence 80%, and the current Lemon Amiga score is 7.5 out of 10, which, if you consider that other magazines would have given this a monstrously high score, it means the average I'm going to round up to 8 out of 10. I think this game does have some great things going for it and some unique things as well. It introduces different things in every level, so I have massive respect for this, even though I didn't get very far with it. But then again, if you play the fixed version and the bug fixed version, maybe you'll get further than me. Thank you.